Welcome back to our Back to Eden Garden, and this is a beautiful fall day. It's so beautiful, I don't even want to cut anything, but it's that time. i got to start harvesting things so we can get things out and get new things in. Right now, I'm working on lemongrass for the third time. Um, just harvesting in different little places, getting as much as I can. This stuff, it smells so good. I wish you could smell it. This lemongrass is beautiful, and when it's dried, it even gets more potent. Um, I use this for so many different things, from teas. Um, you can even make your own oil, which is also a good mosquito repellent. But this lemongrass is beautiful. I have it in several places um, out in the garden. And I'm going to be going through to collect more. So right now I'm doing the lemongrass. And I think I'm going to take you inside just to give you a little peek at the tent and what we have in here. So we have some beautiful peppers. And I think I'm going to pick a few. We have the Jamaican cherry. Yeah, Jamaican men. We have some peppers in here, um, some habaneros, some brown mustards, and a few collard greens and eggplants in the back. And I didn't show you, but look at these beautiful banana wax peppers right here. Look at these beautiful peppers. And I'll get a couple of these. I'll use these tonight for dinner. Got some uh, Russian kale, Swiss chard, ginger, and regular kale too, which is the Lacentino or dinosaur kale. We have German chamomile, some calendias, comfrey green right under the cannabis. And the cannabis buds are getting very big, as you can see. We have some um, cherry tomatoes, which are flowering now. I think I, uh, my pollinated, he's hand pollinated them oh, too. Oh, my husband's just telling me he hand pollinated very well. We have some fennel here. A little ginger and my lovely sweet potato vines which I'm using these leaves for stir fries wonderful stir fries and also for my green juices and then here in this box we also have another Jamaican cherry and we also have garlic weed or either known as anima or guinea hen back to the back right here we have some lemon balm some onions Hey, and you know what? Some of you guys need to know that these onions, these are onions that I bought from the grocery store. I use uh, the tops and I plant at the bottom so you can always have an endless supply of onions when you do that. That's nice to know because, you know, you just want to make a quick omelet. You can just come out and get your own onions and it feels so good to not have to go to the grocery store to do that. So we have more ginger in this, this box here, this garden bed. More cannabis. It's turmeric too. And turmeric, yes. And some catnip. And a few beets. And we have another herb here, which is the vinca major or a periwinkle. And this guinea hen is like right on the edge here. Beautiful. And back here, we do have a little thyme, dill wheat, and coming up on this box here, we have Genovese basil everywhere, turmeric, and ginger, and periwinkle. And I'm coming back to cut the basil after I'm done with this stent to dry it as well. We have some parsley that's going to seed, which is okay. I love using that. More Swiss chard and more um, ginger in here. And there's lots of comfrey back there as well.
Oh, and to our surprise here, look, we have one tomato. Yeah, I saw that yeah. earlier when I came out with the watering. Yeah, nice little tomato. And then we have more herbs over here. This is feverfew. And this is stinging nettle. Whorehound. And that is globe artichoke there. And some bok choy. And we have peppers in here too. Marjoram over here in the back. Watch your hands so you don't get stung. And some spicy brown mustards. Mmm, my favorite. Yeah. More peppers here. More guinea hen. And of course the Jamaican cherry here. And then I have some parsley in this container and lots of Jamaican herbs again here I see a little bit of lemon balm coming in here next to the peppers and there's even chamomile hiding in there and on this side I have the beautiful white sage and I use this for smudging so this will be taken very soon and we have the leaf of life plant here. Be making tinctures with that. And then that background, that beautiful bouquet, that is holy basil, Tulsi tea. And this is more bok choy, more peppers, and lemon balm. And this is an amaranth for callaloo here. And a big bouquet of oregano. And this one, it took a very long time for it to start growing, but it's really taken off now. That is the cancer bush from Africa, grown from seed. And on this side, we have some dandelions mixed in with lemon balm, Swiss chard to the back, and more comfrey, and cannabis. Oh, and those are garlic chives right next to the onions. And those are tasty too in salads and I like to use them in eggs too. And there's some more German chamomile next to that and I see a few of them are flowering at the bottom right under the cannabis. See right there, the chamomile. Yeah. Yeah. Hiding. Yeah, hiding among, in plain sight. Among the giants. Yeah. And we got the oregano. I did. Fantastic. So I'm going to take you this way over here where we have more onions. Uh, this is wonderful for me because it's right near the house. So from my kitchen, I just come out and pick these onions. So that's very useful and helpful for me. We have some, I think that is Swiss chard there. And some parsley, which is wonderful. I like to nibble off that and put that in my soups and stews too. So we do things the old fashioned way right here in the city of North Las Vegas. I'm also doing sprouts. Um, this is the third day of my sprouts. I did put them outside. I'm gonna put them in the sun for about maybe 30 minutes and let them get a little bit of chlorophyll um, because they'll be ready to eat in another day. So I just rinsed them. I rinse them three times a day and that's about for four to five days. So we'll have sprouts to go in our juices that I make on a regular basis. And this is a a cutting that I took from my Jamaican sorrel and I wanted to see if I could actually do it and I did it's been successful so far this is like eight weeks now so it's now sprouting the new leaves and I'm happy about that and then here we have the mimosa and this is a sensitivity plant see how they close and more Jamaican cherry rosemary, and curry plant. So we have lots of trees that are out here and all of them are doing really good. My husband just had the gardeners and the landscapers to help us to put some drain pipes in our new trees over here. Uh, there's a lemon, an orange, 
and a grapefruit. So he makes um, a fertilizer which he can explain to you. It's a Jadam liquid fertilizer. They've been using this process for thousands of years, but of recent times, Young Sung Chow had developed the liquid fertilizer where there's some that can be used for uh, infestation of insects or mild or uh, mold on plants that actually controls it using natural products. And simply what he does is anything that comes from his garden, he puts that in a dechlorinated water um, with some leaf mold. And then therefore the juices that come from the plant in the leaf mold is then made to be able to be a liquid fertilizer. But there's other processes that Young Sun Child uses. I would advise you to go on YouTube and look up Young Sun Child and see how the process was developed. And I learned that from him. And that way you don't have to go be getting bone meal and blood meal and because those granules takes months to do any effective work in the soil where using a liquid fertilizer, natural liquid fertilizer, uptakes in the root system immediately in the root zone. So that's just a, a short explanation of what Jadam liquid fertilizer encompasses. And so now we're back over here at our fig tree. And yesterday my husband tied my ashwagandha with the little winter berries, you can see them on here, the little red berries. They're full of seeds. This plant is so medicinal. It is an adaptogen. Um, I go into all of this a lot more on our other channel um, that we have in our store, the Herbal Triage, but this is one beneficial plant. They never usually grow this large. People you start harvesting these plants when they're very small and they take the roots, but the leaves are medicinal as well. And I keep this mother plant for myself because you know, we're growing this in the desert and this, you know, seems to be a strange condition, but we're able to do it and I just enjoy doing it. So I usually take cuttings from this and make my new plants. And those are the ones that I take the roots from and I usually keep this big one here next to the um, grapevines. And um, I cut it back, we cut it back in the fall, but it's truly a producer. So we have a couple other sides. We're gonna go over and look at some different um, plants that we haven't shown you in our side garden as well as you'll get a peek at my husband's watering system, which um, he developed. And then he had our landscapers to, you know, maximize the benefits to continue to uh, do this process. He started it about seven years ago when we moved here. It was just gravel when we had this backyard. So we've turned it into, that's why we call it our back to Eden garden because it was truly an effort of changing everything from rock and just a few trees over to now. Let me give him a quick demonstration from the watering system. So in the towers, um, as you can see how he has now irrigation to go to everything. And these are things that you think about even as you get older, you want to be able to continue, you know, what you love and what you want to do. So these watering systems, um, he's very methodical when he thought it out and our landscaper was able to uh, produce this. So <clears throat> we really do appreciate it because it helps us. And also we conserve water because we know we're just not watering the ground. The plants are getting the nutrients. But he uses this system also to put in his Jadam um, fertilizing system, which is made up of all of the composting leaves that we have, all of the leftover fruits and vegetables that we use. And so we're getting into a system where basically there's no waste and you know it's bringing and putting back life back into the plants so the organic system is multiplied over and over again now he does hand water quite a bit i have um, in the towers i'm just putting in lettuce uh, all different types uh, butter lettuce romaine lettuce bib lettuce um, there's a little bit of purslane and dandelions. They just look like beautiful bouquets over here. I like this side because of just the natural beauty. I love the flowers. And the last couple of towers are just now coming because I planted from seeds. So that's gonna be arugula and these last towers here. And they're just starting to bud out a little bit. <clears throat> Thank <clears throat> you.
And here we have a bed of beautiful mullein. This is so soft. My husband always says it's called what? The poor man's toilet paper. And to me, it would be the rich man's because it's softer than toilet paper <laughs> to, to, to me, actually. Excellent, excellent for respiratory, lungs, overall health. Also good for making ear oils and salves. Uh, mullein is one of my top plants here. And yes, you can see it's taken off here. And then we have another huge mullein by itself. Uh, this is the okra. The okra is still producing everywhere, every day. When I come out every couple of days, and here's one ready, a couple of days, and here's one ready to pick right now. And there's always flowers coming on to yeah. make more okra. Right, and we left a few big ones on there for seed, but they're still making okra every day. I'm coming out every two days at least to get a few off of here. You know, if you don't come out every two days or so, you'll be shocked and then it'll be another one for seed because they grow super fast at this time. So we're always kind of trying to take a peek and we still miss them a lot of times. And I see two over here now. I'm gonna leave them tomorrow, but I better make sure I come out tomorrow because they'll probably double in size. That's how they do. So we have okra, we have strawberries. These are beets, is that what we call it? Yes, I have some beets in between. And these beets have been transplanted like three times and they're still doing good. Um, <clears throat> and they were in big clumps and I saved them in the other beds and then I spaced them out and they should do just fine because they're already regenerating and coming back. Between the two pistachio trees, we have more okra and we have this beautiful, beautiful bush, which is called sunchokes. Sun chokes. Yes. And the sunchoke leaves and the flowers are edible, but most of all, they have another delight underground, and that's where you get the actual buttery tasting sun chokes from, and you dig them out. They're like potatoes. They're high in inulin, and they're wonderful. I love the taste of those, and I use those in a lot of soups. So once everything kind of dies out as it's doing, um, that's when we start taking out those, and you'll always get more because you never take out any, so you'll have a net bed. I'll probably have artichokes forever. There's a couple of pineapple plants here I've been growing for. what We've been growing these for the last two years? Yes. Yeah, yes. so we, we're sure we'll probably get a harvest the next following year. Uh, there's a kimquat tree. It's growing too. Yes, and then there's a leaf of life back it's there. Fruits. That leaf of life is doing really good. I take those leaves again, that's good for respiratory. And behind it there's elderberry, and we use the leaves of the elderberry besides, as well as the elderberries. The leaf of life plant grows to uh, at least two meters. Yes. Yeah, it's about six or seven feet. Okay. And then we have a pomegranate next to it. This is the golden pomegranate. And yesterday I harvested more moringa leaves. Um, so moringa has given us now a total of four flushes and it's still going. There's a nice, beautiful one back there I haven't touched. And I'll probably get that one um, in the next two weeks. So there's moringa, there's another kimquat in here, a dwarf one miniature, and then some turmeric growing in this, this planter, and one pineapple. So there's more turmeric back here, some lavender, and some black-eyed Susie's, Susan plants here. And then in this bit, We've been trying to keep it a little protected just until it gets a little cooler. He's still oh, he's okay. here. Let's see if I can get in here. There we go. And this is our cabbage. Nice and moist. And our cabbage plants are doing really good. I have a few. Hmm? Very humid under there. Yeah, also. very humid in there. It's nice. Um, there's a couple of beets that I put in here as well in between. And then in this bed, there's ginger, more ginger. This is a combination a box lot here. Of ginger. <laughs> Lots of ginger, black eyed Susie's, and stinging nettles. So you have to be careful when you stick your hand in there. And then there's some raspberries, mm -hmm. blackberries that we have planted back here, plumbago. Um, there's a whole huge 
container of catnip and oregano and periwinkle in that one. You proceed to the side. And this is hibiscus. And this is another complete planter filled with Jerusalem sunchokes. More berries. Looks like it's kind of doing very well. I still need to put some acid at it because they like acid conditions in the yeah. soil. So you'll probably be adding a little acid to that. Mm -hmm. This is the chase berry tree. Some hawthorn. More amaranth here. And then there is more holy basil Tulsi. And in this one, we have some beautiful flowers of four o'clocks in white and yellow and pink. And then we have also collard greens now starting to really show up and show out. Yeah, and the elderberry is doing looking really good back here. As well as the Vinca majors. I don't bear act like it didn't want to take off for a while, for a long while, for Yeah, months. you know, at the time. And there's also leaf of life plants back here as well. Like I said, we have them kind of scattered around the property in different places. Watch your hose. I will. And then here we have a few. I think this one is the kimquat. That's what that is. Right. Miniature kimquats. Mm -hmm. And then this is a lemon. And next to that is a, a guava, guava bush and more hibiscus. When will it fruit? Um, it may not fruit this year, but you know, in the winter time, it is year round perennial. I notice I'm looking at flowers, so I shouldn't say that because I'm looking at flowers right there on the tips. Mm -hmm. So possibly we could get something. And then we'll take you out to our hidden garden on the front, in the front and the rear side of our front yard. So living in the city, you know, and when you have HOAs, you think that you can't grow anything, but you can live in an apartment and you can grow. As I'm showing you the sprouts, those can be done indoors. You can put them in your windowsill for half a day to get the green chlorophyll to come up in them if you want that. But those can be sprouted in the kitchen from anywhere from five to 10 days, you can have sprouts. This is our patai, our dragon fruit. And they were like struggling just for a little while. They do sometimes in the summer, but now I notice they're like getting thicker. This is more lemongrass over here, and then some lilies. And of course, we have some more globe artich artichokes over here too. And here, usually they will last till about February. So before we step out to the front, you know, that system I was telling you about with my husband, there's a couple of things that we have going on over here. One of these containers, is wood chips that wood we chips, keep. Right. Yeah. And the second one is compost. It's this compost that we make up from all of our fruits and vegetables. And now so that's actual compost. And then this is his water containers that he collects the water and once he mixes his uh, mixtures of his dam liquid fertilizer goes in here. And then it goes into this one. And it recirculates down into here and then it's distributed throughout the garden beds, which saves me time, work, and it's efficient. Stick on here. And so we didn't talk about the mother Nepalis. You can get a picture of that Nepalis. That's the mother Nepalis out front, I mean in the back. And I'm gonna take you to all her babies that I've made since then. This is the mother Nepalis. And when we bought this Nepalese uh, about seven years ago, it was down to this line when we, when we bought it. So that's as big as it was. So over the years, it's become massive, and it would be much more massive um, if the babies were attached to them to allow it to grow like they are. My wife can assure you that. So in the last three years, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. This is what I've grafted from there to bring out all of these Nepalis. And these I use, I take maybe the smaller ones that are like this size, perfect, and I'll use that in the juice. 
or even in a stir fry. You take all the little bit of thorns off with a knife. I always wear gloves when I do to be careful, but that's what makes a wonderful dish as well as it's so many, it has so many benefits to it. Again, um, you have to look up the Nepalis. They're wonderful as a food source too. So this is right in our front. And then over here we have the Jamaican soil and they are making now the fruit portion of it. Um, and the leaves are edible as well and medicinal, I should say, and edible. And so are the bougainvilleas, the flowers they use to make teas. So everything on our property is either can be used for an herb or we can eat it in our meals. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to Earth Medicine because I learned something very important the other day. And even as an herbalist, you don't think that you're never finished learning. Uh, lantanas, the lantana plant is excellent for a lot of medicinal purposes. Um, did you show them this guava right here? The guava? Yes, I did. Okay, that, this is another guava. And so it looks, it will make a nice hedge, but uh, the gardeners cut it back a lot. So it's kind of, you know, small now, but it definitely is still usable and all the leaves on it. Give it to lantanas and we can. And then as my husband has one over, there's a bay leaf right there, the bay, tr bay leaf. And that's used for cooking stews and also medicinal purposes. And you miss this, the oh. hawthorn. Okay, let me uh, display the lantana that we have grown in our yard that for so long we thought were poisonous and we didn't want them on our properties because we thought they didn't have any use. But my wife, the herbalist, found out that they do have use. And right now the latest information, um, you can, like I said, verify all this information always. But this information is saying even for the latest thing as a mosquito repellent, which I did not realize, and I was bitten lots of times, so I can't wait. It's a beautiful flower, but it also can be used to make a repellent for mosquitoes. And once you make that with the coconut oil, and I would say that on Earth Medicine, hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. uh, Earth Medicine, um, that I learned that. How are you? Morning. Yes. My name is Danny. Hi, Danny. I'm coming, come on in. For your uh, cooked up? Yes. This is a hawthorn. I don't know if that door's open or not. Oh, it's not, Danny. I'll yeah. be right oh, back to open it up for you. Yeah. 